Welcome, welcome. Shalom. Peace be unto you and your families. Welcome. Tonight we are going to come together giving praise and honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus who died on the cross in our place. So we're coming together with communion, remembering what Jesus did for us and the finished work of the cross. Um, if it's your first time joining, uh, my name is Julie. Be sure you grab your elements, your juice, your water, um, your cracker or bread if you'd like to, you know, participate. Um, I'm going to say a, a prayer and then we're going to go right into the study. We're going to be reading my utmost for his highest, a love letter from our king, a few scriptures. We'll take the communion and we'll close out in prayer. So we're doing it different. So everybody has an opportunity to come on if you're pressed for time to um, to go ahead and join for the communion. <clears throat> Get a little bit of the God's word and partake of the, the Holy Communion. Amen. <clears throat> now, my dog is in the background making all kinds of noises. So, I'm going to go ahead and say a prayer. <laughs> <clears throat> then we're going to get started. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, Father. I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you move through us tonight, that you are welcome here teach us and show us what you need us to do. Help us to open our hearts to you and our minds to the word of God and have a great revelation of everything that you're trying to tell us, Lord. Father God, bless each and every person who joins tonight, who wants to receive from Jesus all that Jesus died to give them, Lord. We just thank you for the precious gift of Jesus, and we give you all honor, glory, and praise. And it's all in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, amen. So, with no further ado, let's get into our study. Because once we do this, all those who want to join in prayer, I'm going to post a prayer that I'm coming up right after this. It'll be a prayer get-together. So, prayer warriors, come on in. It's going to be here after the communion. So, let's read what the Lord is saying to us tonight, okay? He says, Is they're good in temptation. Wow. First Corinthians ten thirteen says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as in, is common to man. The word temptation has come to mean something bad to us today, but we, we tend to use the word in the wrong way. Temptation itself is not sin. It is, it is something we are bound to face simply by virtue of being human. Not to be tempted would mean that we were already uh, that we are already so shameful that we would be beneath contempt. Yet many of us suffer from temptations we would never have to suffer, and simply because we have refused to allow God to lift us up to a higher level where we face temptations of another kind. Hi, Paula. A person's inner nature, inner nature, what he possesses in a, in the inner spiritual part of his being determines what he is tempted by on the outside. The temptation fits the true nature of the person being tempted and reveals the possibilities of his nature. Every person actually determines or sets the level of his own temptation because temptation will come to him in accordance with the levels of his controlling inner nature. Temptation comes to me suggesting a possible shortcut to the realization of my highest goal. It does not direct me toward what I understand to be evil, but toward what I understand to be good. Temptation is something that confuses me for a while, and I don't know whether something is right or wrong. When I yield to it, I have made lust a god, and the temptation itself becomes the proof that it is, was only my own fear that prevented me from falling into the sin earlier. Temptation is not something we can escape. In fact, it is essential to the well-rounded life of a person. Beware of thinking that you are tempted as no one else. What you go through is common inheritance of the human race, not something that no one has ever uh, before endured. Everybody has endured temptation. God does not save us from temptation. He sustains us in the midst of them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See Hebrews 2.18 and Hebrews 4.15 through 16. That was a good little read. Thank you, Lord. Oh, boy. 
It has been crazy and it continues to get crazier. And I just think, oh Lord, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming. And that's just my reaffirmation of the Lord that he's going to take us away from here. So keep your eyes on Jesus. And we're a stay of the word of God. Amen. All right. So let us come together and read our beautiful love letter. Let's see how the Lord's going to love on us. Amen. He says, my beloved, you are my beautiful bride. Oh, yes, I am. Amen. You are my beautiful bride. There is a day coming when we will rejoice together in heaven. No wedding on earth can compare to the celebration we will share on that amazing day. Every bride prepares for her earthly wedding by doing all she can to be her best. The bride's attendants work diligently to make everything perfect for before she meets her bridegroom. My child, I am your heavenly bridegroom, and I have already made all the preparations for you. Don't worry that your life is not perfect. On that glorious wedding day, I will present you spotless and blameless for all heaven to see. All I ask of you today is that your heart be fully and completely mine. Let my faithfulness, mercy, and love be the sweet music that fills the wedding sanctuary. You, my bride, will be clothed in a beautiful gown of my glory on that great day, and all the depths and heights of heaven's joy will be yours. Love your king and your bridegroom. Oh, my goodness. I don't know about you, but I am excited for that moment. Amen. Revelations 19.7 is a scripture. It says, let us be glad and rejoice and honor him for the time has come for the wedding feast of the lamb and his bride has prepared herself. Are you preparing yourself? I don't know about you, but looking at all this other stuff around, we're, we need to be getting ready for the Lord. Amen. Get married. <laughs> All right. If you're just joining, welcome, welcome. Go, grab your elements. Uh, we're going to do some scriptures and then we're going to take our communion. Um, grab your juice, your water, your cracker or bread. Um, so and hit the like and share. We want to share the gospel. We want to share Jesus. Amen. Salvation. All right. So let's read the scriptures tonight. It is Psalms 119, 25 through 28. It says, Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes and make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. Strengthen me according to your word. Amen. Then I have my handwritten scripture, 1 Peter 5, 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. That's right. Amen. There's nobody here that's not going through trials and tribulations. That's for sure. All right. Isaiah 30 verse 19. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Don't you love that? I love that. <laughs> Matthew 5, 4, God blesses the, those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Thank you, Father. Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. That's right. That's the key to those who love God. Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your beautiful scriptures. Lord, as always, continue to engrave these words upon our hearts that we would be a light shining to this world, that we would bring hope and your future to them, Lord. Father God, bless this time as we come together, honoring Jesus, the finished work of the cross, and receive from him tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're with us, guiding us, teaching us, and speaking to us tonight. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, turn to 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26. Now remember, the bread is discernment of the bread is discerning that this is his Jesus' body. Um, and, the, and the drink that you're having tonight represents his blood. So we are going to discern the Lord's body this way, you know, and his, his, uh, 
blood. The body, his body was beaten. It was broken. He was, he was uh, at a whipping post and subjected his body to be uh, tortured. I mean, he, he didn't have any skin hardly left on his body. And because of this, this makes you whole, righteous, and brings you health, healing, and restoration. And then for the drink, you know, the blood of Jesus is what it represents. His blood makes you righteous. It cleanses you from all sins. Praise God that you, you're now forgiven, redeemed, and able to come into the throne of God and have and have and ask your petitions whatever they may be and he will answer you amen so let's go ahead and read together and, and partake tonight amen it says here in first corinthians eleven twenty three through 26 for i received from the lord that which i also delivered to you that the lord jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our bread or your whatever you have, your cracker. going to hold that up and see Jesus there at the whipping post. Remember, his body was beaten and broken for you so you can receive tonight all that wonderful health and healing and restoration. Oh, yes. Whatever it is, lay it at the feet of Jesus and receive that wonderful redemption tonight. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your broken body. We thank you for bearing our symptoms and sicknesses at the cross so that we may have your health and wholeness. We declare that by your stripes, by the beatings you bore, and by the lashes that fell on your back, we are completely healed. We believe and we receive your resurrection life in our bodies today. Let us eat his flesh together. Now, likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So right now you're going to hold your drink up. You're going to see Jesus on the cross and the blood that flowed out of his body from having his hands nailed to that cross. You know, the Lord became a curse, so you and I are not. This is a wonderful thing. We can receive so many things from Jesus and all that he did. His blood that flowed out of his body is sinless blood that washes us white as snow. It makes us righteous. We're forgiven forever. And we're able to come in, in a right standing before God the Father. And we can rejoice in, in this, knowing that we are cleansed from all of our sins, all our faults and failures, everything you've ever done. Jesus' blood covers you, and you are now righteous. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood that has washed us whiter than snow. Your blood has brought us forgiveness and made us righteous forever. And as we drink, we celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which includes preservation, healing, wholeness, and all your blessings. So let us drink his blood together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Don't forget who you are. You might go and, and sin. You're a fake. You're a fake sinner. That, I, I think that's a great way to think about it. If you sin, you are a fake sinner because Jesus' blood covers you. You no longer are a sinner. So that's what you call a fake sinner. It's all fake because <laughs> it's been taken care of under the blood of Jesus. He's already known it from the beginning of time, and His blood covers and washes you. 
Amen. Walk in the newness of life. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Claim it over your life. The enemy has no foothold over you when you do this. Don't let him. Don't let him. Stand upright. You're chosen, loved, needed, wanted, and highly valued and favored by the king. Hallelujah. I thank you guys for joining as we're doing this different. So for, for spread the word, if people just have time for communion, it's shortened now. So they can come back and do that and get a little bit of the word of God. And for those who want to be prayer warriors or have prayer requests, we have a different uh live that we're going to be doing here in a few minutes so i'm going to do another post to give people an opportunity to see that and that way they can maybe post their prayer request or see that it's something else maybe they want to join in prayer who knows but we're going to try it this way it seems to be a, a lot more effective if i'm just doing communion i think this is the best way to do it and then we'll concentrate on our prayers amen okay heavenly father thank you lord for being with us today holy spirit we love you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you guide us and teach us and that you're motivating and moving us in the right direction to be a light into this world, Lord, to speak life into the, the people, Lord. Give them a hope of who you are, a revelation of Jesus, and that we would all have a heart that would hunger after you and spread the gospel throughout the world, no matter how we feel, Lord, no matter what we see. We know you're on the throne. We know your plan prevails. Hallelujah. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, you guys. <laughs> Good night. I love you. Be a light into the world. Spread the gospel. Be back here tomorrow for communion. Bye-bye.